Welcome back to another lesson. In this lesson, I'd like to teach you the what I think is the proper way of thinking about harmony. That is, not in terms of chords and chord names, but in terms of functional scale degrees. Uh, it's a lot simpler than it sounds, and let me start with a simple example that will sort of get you into it or explain why this is important. Let me play two chord progressions. One of them is going to be C, going to F and back to C. Uh, and the other one is going to be E flat, going to A flat and back to E flat. I'm not saying what type of chords, so it's implicitly assumed that they're major. Let me just play them and you'll see what I mean. And now for the E flat going to A flat. So despite playing different chords in each of these progressions, you could instinctively hear that I was really playing the same. Uh, and this sameness is really the heart of the issue. How do you express the fact that these, are, these two progressions are the same thing despite the fact that they happen in different keys? So the first progression is played out in the key of C major. And the second progression is played out in the key of E flat major. And the correct way to think about them is not in terms of chords, uh, C going to F going to C, or E flat going to A flat going to E flat, but in terms of their scale degrees. In both cases, we're playing the first degree going to the fourth degree, and then over and over again. So in the key of C flat, the notes have numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is one again. And the same is true in the E flat uh, scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is one again. So the first progression was a one, a C, going to a four, which is an F. And the second progression, viewed in the key of E flat major, is again a one, an E flat, going to a four, which is an A flat. Now, thinking in this way, is useful not only when you want to transpose songs between keys, but also when you want to understand the functional purpose of the chord you're playing. So what do I mean by functional purpose and where does this idea come into play? Let's look again at the key of uh, C major. Let's look at the fifth degree, which is a G, right? One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to play the G, uh, G major chord. And naturally, what our sort of brain expects uh, when hearing this is for the G to resolve into C, the root. I'm not saying this is the only way to proceed from a G, but it's kind of the most natural way. A G, a C, a five going into a one. Now, 
any chord progression I play, let me just play some chord progression, you'll see the moment I hit the 5, the natural res uh, resolution of the 5 is the 1. So let me just play uh, again the key of C. I'll play an E minor, going to an A minor, to a D minor, to a G, to a C. resolving to a 1. Now, I could have had the exact same conversation, but in the key of E flat uh, major. Here, the 5 is a B flat. And again, the 5 tends to resolve to the 1. Again, this doesn't mean that it always has to resolve to the 1, but it's one of the most natural resolutions for the chord. So again, let me play uh, the same progression, the same scales of the, uh, um, of the E flat major scale. Uh, and again, once I hit the five chord, the B flat, you'll see that it kind of, your brain automatically expects it to resolve to the one, which is the E flat. So let me just play it and you'll hear it. Now, the moment you start thinking about <clears throat> the degrees of the scale you're in, it's easy to generalize about those degrees. So we've seen that the 5 naturally resolves to the 1. Now, the different scale degrees have names. I mean, sometimes you run into these names. Uh, for example, the 1 in the key of C major, so actually in any key, the 1 is called the root. The 5 is called the dominant degree. So the dominant degree resolves most naturally to the root. Uh, the fourth degree is called the subdominant. Then the second degree is called the supertonic. So there are all these weird funky names which you can see now listed on the screen. Uh, they're some of them are, you'll encounter them mainly, I guess, when looking at or when analyzing uh, more traditional harmony, uh, either classical or sometimes jazz. They're not used as often when discussing uh, popular music. So when discussing popular music, people will just use the names or the numbers of the degrees. So they'll say five going into a one or a 2 going to a 5 going to a 1 because a 2 or one of the common resolutions of the 2 is to a 5 and then one of the common resolutions of the 5 is to a 1 I'll just play it a 2 a minor 2 actually to a 5 to a 1 and the idea is that when you encounter a new progression or when you hear a song don't ask yourself what chords are they playing there. Uh, is it an E flat? Is it an A flat? Or whatever. Ask yourself instead what degrees are they playing? How does the progression look like in terms of degrees? And this will help you generalize between songs. So if you hear one song in one key and another song in another key, you might actually find big similarities between them uh, even though they don't share the same chords. For example, you know, let me just play a progression. Uh, let me play a C, or actually, let me play it in a different key. Let me play it in a, I don't know, an A. So let me play the progression, then we'll analyze it. So.
So first of all, it's important to understand what key you're in. So this is the key of A. And I'll make a video at one point explaining how to recognize the key that you're in. And the chords I was playing uh, were A, um, then A, uh, then C sharp minor, then a D, and then the last chord was really uh, a, an F major seventh on the bass of G. Now instead of thinking of these chords in terms of their names, an A going to a C sharp minor, going to a D and whatever, you should think of them in terms of their scale degrees. So you have a one going to a three minor or three minor seven, then going to a four, And then the last one is really a flattened sixth major seventh on the on the base of a flattened seventh, and then back to a one. So always try to think in terms of scale degrees when you hear a new progression or or maybe come up with, with something new. Try to think about where you are in terms of the scale degrees. And what this will do is that over time, you'll start recognizing and making out these regularities in music. You'll see these basic units of harmony repeating themselves in many, many different songs. That's it. I hope you've learned something interesting and I'll see you next time.